close your eyes and keep track of the breath. Be aware of it all the way in, all the way out. And as the Buddha said, put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. In other words, any thoughts you may have about the world right now, just put them aside. Don't feel that you're obligated to think them. The fact that people are dying, people are suffering, that's a common part of the world. They were dying in the time of the Buddha, and they're going to keep on dying. We have to train our minds in the midst of that. It may seem heartless, but it's not, because we're subject to death, too. And the problem with all of us beings in the world is that we die without skill. We live our lives without skill, and then we die without skill, and then we suffer even more. And we can lessen the suffering of the world if we start living in a more skillful way, training the mind, first in generosity, then in virtue, and then in meditation. Because one of the ways in which we cause suffering for ourselves and suffering for one another is the fact that we're looking for happiness outside. We're feeding outside all the time. And the sources of food are limited. And even if they're not limited, there's, there are a lot of sources that everybody wants. So they're going to fight over it. And then they're going to die. It accomplishes nothing. The best thing you can do is get yourself out of that cycle. That's the most responsible thing. The kindest thing. And so it's not a selfish act just to put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. Because you're doing it so that you can focus inside to see where the problem is inside, what it's coming from. We focus on the breath to keep us in the present moment, because if you want to see what's going on in the mind, you have to be around the present moment. You can have some thoughts about the past, thoughts about the future, which may give you some insight into the mind. But if you really want to see the mind in action, this is where it's happening. So we use the breath as an anchor, well, because it's a guarantee that we're in the present moment. When you're with the breath, you're in the present moment. And also because you can make the present moment a more pleasant place to be. Take advantage of the fact that the breath is a potential that you can change. In fact, that teaches you a big lesson right there, as with so many other things in life that we accept as just the way things are. Actually, there are potentials for change. Potentials for change in our habits, potentials for change in the way we act and speak and think. And you want to take advantage of that. So stay with the breath. Get to know the breath really well. Because it's going to be your friend here in the present moment. As you're trying to figure out what in the mind needs to be abandoned, what needs to be developed. So you can pull out of the world in a responsible way. They talk about interconnectedness, what a good thing interconnectedness is, but we see now it puts us in touch with all kinds of suffering. And if we're not careful, we cause a lot of suffering through interconnectedness, too. So learn how to disconnect. First by coming inside and straightening out the, the mess that's inside. And then if you want to offer something to the world that's positive, well, this is where it comes from, from a well-trained mind. So as I said, this is the responsible way out.